I'm going to go over some of the, um, the parts of uh, paste printing, which are a little bit different um, in terms of what's there in research. In a lot of the fields, there is a lot of academic research being done, and paste printing, I was not able to find much, and that's through both research here in this class. And, um, that said, there's some really cool stuff being done in the open source community, so I'm going to try to bring a little bit, a bit of that into the classroom. Um, process description, there's two main types of uh, printers. There's syringe pumps and continuous pumps. Syringe pumps use a you know a syringe like you get a, see as a doctor's office to you know, squeeze filament squeeze uh, paste out onto a print platform. Continuous pumps are not very common in industry right now. You'll see them in some of the big concrete printers and also in the printer that I'm building. With. So there's not videos of that, but there is. This is a you know quick overview that a guy did. Um, he goes by Rich Rap in the online community, um, and he's done some pretty cool work and some testing on. Um, on doing uh, paste extrusions. So this is a printer that he's built, uh, printing with some clays and uh, sugar materials. Um, he ended up actually he ends up being able to print with chocolate. Um, he's actually printing on a mirror because when you're in the open source world and you need a really flat surface, you go to you know where do you find really flat surfaces? Well, mirrors. They're generally really flat and they work quite well for this. Um, and so throughout, he has a very long blog posting on his blog where he shows all of his research that he did on making this system and you know what design decisions he made it really boils down to a few basic things that I'll get to uh, after the video yeah uh, that's a, that's real-time printing right there um, so um, you know standards for things like I think this is actually uh, sugar um, it's like a sugar frosting so, you know, for a little, for like a cupcake topper, probably an hour or two. So not too bad, but still, you know, kind of long. Yeah, you might be able to get a little faster that way, or just more more powerful. So this is actually, I believe, printing, uh, I think this is printing a clay, making printing a little frog out of clay. And you can see his design here. It's a, it's a fairly large uh, geared drive that pulls down on the plunger of an extruder of a, of a uh, syringe. Yeah, so this one's either frosting or clay. He doesn't really tell exactly which materials he's using. He has a couple white clays and then a couple white frostings, and it's not quite sure which one's which. Um, yeah. True. <laughs> um, there are actually some faster versions of these out there. The, his, the one he's doing here, he's trying to figure out you know, can he have it use effectively exactly the same code for a plastic printed part as for a um, frosting printed part. Um, and because it's a kind of new technology, it's still having a little bit of fun experimenting with it. Um, so little tiny parts, 18 millimeters across there. So this is super, super high resolution. Uh, I believe the nozzle there is a 0.6 millimeter needle. Huh? So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, caref very carefully. It's on aluminum foil, so you, you basically pick the whole thing up and then pull the aluminum foil off the bottom. So this is a little Stanford money and then the frog, a couple of little vases, some of the standard uh, 3D printer test parts that are used in the open source community. The main dominant variables in paste printing boil down to the same basic stuff as FDM printing. So you have your feed rate, you have your extrusion rates. Uh, very similar to regular FDM printing. And then there's some extra stuff, paste viscosity. If your paste is too thin or too thick, you'll have it either be runny or you won't have it, you know, be able to print. And then adhesion, because with a thermoplastic, the plastic being laid down is melting the previous layer, and so you get fairly decent adhesion. Whereas with this, you don't really have that luxury. You're printing it at room temperature, and so you need to rely on the natural adhesion of the material. Um, so the first uh, research study... <laughs> research study, if, if you can call it that, uh, is uh, Rich Rapp's, or Richard Horn's um, design of the uh, universal paste extruder, as he called it. And so a little little bit of his experimentation. Um, this is a print with a frosting, and you can see on the, on the first image here, uh, shows a little snowman that was printed, but it was printed too fast. And you can, and you can see that because the details are a little sloppy and some of the lines don't connect all the way where they should. And then on the other side, you can see printed a little bit, a little bit better, but still has, um, 
still has some work to be done, as he explains on his blog. There's a huge number of parameters that need to be tuned. Um, things like pace consistency, which the unit of measurement that he uses to describe what pace consistency is, is about the consistency of cream cheese or Nutella. So that's kind of the level of research that this is at right now, is where people are saying, about that, and it'll work. So that's a fairly fairly common level of knowledge that's around for this at the moment. The other study he did was a, he printed, uh, actually was able to print chocolate out of that same printer by heating it up, and um, it, there's a little bit more detail there because when you're printing with certain things like chocolates, chocolate is a solid at room temperature, so you need to heat it up, and the control of that temperature greatly influences the viscosity, and also if you heat chocolate up too much, it'll seize, and then it becomes a solid again at higher temperatures. Really confusing. But you can actually get a lot of uh, different pr uh, properties there that um, make for some pretty cool prints. Uh, the next uh, research study isn't as much a research study as it is um, a the little bit of information I was able to find on one of the concrete printers in the form of probably one of the coolest videos I've seen in a long time. And this is the guy that printed the castle. So you can see there's them talking about the castle and... Um, let me get to, there we go. Um, so there's the actual extrusion head for the concrete printer. Um, not entirely sure exactly what type of extrusion head it is, but based on the sounds that you'll hear when you're watching it print, it sounds like it's actually a screw-driven uh, extruder. Um, so it's effectively a continuous pump for concrete. It pours concrete in the top and then it pumps it out. And there's actually a small guide uh, mechanism at the very end of the extruder that allows it to keep the walls a little bit straighter and uh, keep it printing a little bit better. And you can see here he's printing. Uh, the machine is a huge XY. It's a huge XY gantry above the system. There's a couple pictures that show it a little bit, but not much. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of the shadows. Yeah, um, and so he's printing concrete. And one of the things that he talks about a little bit in this uh, in the news uh, interview that he was in is that. It's really just guess and check. It's a print. The mix wasn't right. It didn't hold together very well. Play around with it a little bit. Print again. Hey, it worked. And then eventually he got it tuned and working well enough that he's printing a whole castle out of it. Um, you can see there, there's there's the lighter gray concrete below is already dried and he'd done it on a previous day and he'd then come back and worked more. So apparently he's got a, he's got a zeroing system and kind of perfect. <laughs> Uh, I would bet that there probably is. Um, <laughs> having worked with concrete before, yeah, there probably is. Um, he doesn't really go into too much detail about that. It's, at this point, more of a, you know, cool idea that he built. He plans to build a version of this and print a house with it, so. Yeah, so it's some pretty, some pretty interesting stuff, and there's, um. Yeah. And the, the, this is it printing with a little bit thinner layers. Um, when he, for a little bit more detail, he can print slightly thinner. And then the seams between the different uh, areas that are being printed. Well, there's actually... Yeah, yeah so... And, and, and this sort of has that. The, the actual nozzle has a guide that pivots, that's a driven guide pivot. Um, you can't really see it too well in the videos, but there, it has a small roller on the back of it and a couple little fences on the front to prevent it from spilling out the front. Um, then there's this controller. Is a, I recognize the board inside that controller is the same one that we've got on our printer in the shop, in uh, the lab. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. He, he has a little bit bigger drivers, and there's some them assembling it because, like a lot of 3D par printed parts, you do need to assemble them after the fact. It's just that here it takes you know, five guys to lift the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, that's that's a pretty awesome castle. I think that's you know for for somebody to be able to do this. And this is not something that really exists in commercial industry yet. There's a couple people, a couple of companies that are starting to play with it, but you know. The first real, like, cool thing to be printed was printed by a guy in his backyard. And, uh, something like a few months. <laughs> that, 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 yeah, 
Well, the R and D happened beforehand, and then it was like a couple months of printing on and off. There were a few periods where it started raining, and so they had to completely stop because you can't print concrete in the rain. Um, and various printer failures and mechanical failures. The gantry fell over at one point and crushed it. Um, <laughs> so some pretty some pretty crazy stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a quite a cool project. So. And so finally, process model. There really isn't a process model for paste printing, but as explained by Richard Horn in his uh, blog information that he has on the universal paste extruder that he created, it's really based on you know heavily on the materials. Every material is going to be very different. They're all going to behave differently, and there's thousands of parameters that you have to tweak. And a lot of times it ends up just being print something, no, that didn't work, try something else. And... You guess and check a lot, just like on a lot of FDM printers. And that's what I've been doing in the lab with the 3D printer we're working on to try to print with bronze. And it's a lot of print. Nope, that's not it. Change a few parameters, change a few settings, look at the part, and try to get... And then a few references.